Okay, as you can see, I'm Shannon Steffen, uh, also known as the Human SEO, which came across, you know, uh, just one day somebody called me I, the Human SEO and I ended up with the name. A um, couple of housekeeping things first. I have a reminder up here, these forms. Uh, Affiliate Summit would really, really like you guys to fill these out. I'm going to tell you that they should all be 10s, but you know, hey, it's up to you. Give me whatever you like. But please fill them out and hand them back so they know how I did on this session, but it also helps me for future sessions to make sure that I'm doing the right topic for you guys. So hand those in. And also you can win something, which is great. You can actually uh, win free tickets. So I'm caffeinated, we're doing good. Are we all awake? Come on. Yes? yes. Okay, because we're human here, so we're all awake people. Okay, we're all talking about being awake, being human online. And a lot of people miss out on SEO because they think it's so overwhelming and they feel so um, inundated by, wow, I'm not as loud as those people over there. Um, so SEO though can be very overwhelming, just to let you guys know. I've been doing this for over, well, actually about 20 years now before Google even started. Uh, I was working at a university and we were working on the website for the university making sure that it was found online. And over the years I worked within IT fields and I noticed that my brain is naturally wired to understand how not only the search engines work from a technical standpoint, but also how the humans are searching. So my degree in philosophy, yes, degree in philosophy, actually came in handy because it was an understanding of what makes people think and tick and how do they connect with other people? And as communications grew online, it was how do we connect those people online? Whether it be from people getting to meet people or if it's people getting to meet those businesses. Because as we know as humans, we have so many frustrations on a daily basis. We are inundated by information and technology. So, <laughs> hello, Dwayne. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. I did that in his session, unfortunately. He waved at me. So um, in this session, I'm actually going to take a step back, and I'm going to actually give you a few tips, human tips. We're going to break this down into the human language and the human understanding. So this is not going to be over your head. This is for everybody. It's for affiliates. It's for networks. My goal here today is to give you empowerment so that you can understand whether you work with an SEO or you decide to take on your own SEO campaigns, you can go ahead and you can feel comfortable that you are doing the right thing. Because un unbelievably, a majority of SEO people or people that try to do SEO services don't know SEO. They don't do this day in and day out. They figure, I'm a web developer, I can do it. We're gonna give you the tools to make yourself shine online. This is human SEO. A few years ago, I trademarked the term human SEO. And why I did this was because I started understanding that people are the search patterns now. And ironically, as I trademarked it, I realized also that Google was starting to become more human, or at least try to. As human innovation progresses, technology progresses to try to keep up with the humans. So these are the three areas that I normally look at for human SEO. Today, for our purposes, we're going to look specifically at content. And the reason why we're looking at content is because content is changing. Content is no longer about your keywords and stuffing keywords. There's a lot of foundational items that people are still missing and the technology still needs to be there. But with content, you're conveying a sense of your own passion for your products and services to your customers and to your potential clients. So we're gonna end up looking specifically at the content today. Now, thin content, how many people have heard of thin content? Okay, we have a few people here. So as the search engine algorithm, or search engine algorithm change, thin content is out. Fat, happy content is in. And a lot of people get really, really concerned with this because they think that that means more words on a page. Now, we do like words, don't get me wrong. 2,000 words, 1,200 words. I'm not going to tell you exactly what number of words because honestly, people concentrate on Google, Yahoo, and Bing. But every single search engine 
and had, or every single social media network, every single website has its own search engine algorithm in a sense. Facebook, Twitter, every one of them is running on its own search. Search.twitter, Facebook's EdDrink. You have all these different algorithms in place, LinkedIn, and content is what feeds those people. So it's not just Google, but for the purpose of today, we're gonna to talk about Google because most people know Google. So your thin content is a sense of authority and a sense of actual purpose and intent on what you're trying to convey. And it's not just text. It could be video. There's been some great sessions here on video. Um, images, there was an image op optimization um, session yesterday. These are the things that you want to look at. You want to know where your clients are at. People are visual. So we're going to look about the visual today and the visual content. And we're actually going to draw on that to see how the search engines understand the content that we're trying to convey. Anybody know what this is? This is what Google sees when you don't give content. This is your website. This is not your website on drugs, but this is your website. When Google comes to a website, you have the code for your website, and then you have the content for your website. There is a foundational code, and WordPress is a great foundation if you're starting out with a new website. There's a lot of great plugins and tools that you can use with WordPress, and a lot of the themes are very clean. When Google or any of the search engines see too much content or too much coding on the page, your content, your actual focus content gets lost. So this can be anything in the world. Google is blind. Think of it like this. If you're going and you're meeting with somebody who is blind, how are you conveying this water bottle? How are you conveying a smile on somebody's face? How are you conveying these? It's not a keyword. You're not saying smile, smile, smile. Big smile, little smile, 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 smile. You're saying what the smile is. In my case, I use the term Irish smiles because it's a huge smile across your face. So your content can be Starbucks infographic. Um, you'll notice that I use a lot of coffee diagrams. I have a little coffee issue. Um, this in itself is great content. Now, I wouldn't, of course, recommend this be the only content on a page. But the reason why I bring this up is twofold. One, because it conveys a sense of information and a uh, connection with a person. But two, an image cannot be read by a search engine correctly without your help. You need to convey the information. So a lot of people think that if they do an infographic that the text can be read on the page, on this infographic. True or false? False. False. It cannot read the image, uh, the text that's overlaid. You have to look at how can you convey this. You can convey it in different ways. The image name should not be image123.jpg. It should be an actual image name. The alt, which used to be used by ADA for people with disabilities in order to read what the image is, you want to use an alt text or a title text or whatever it is if it's a hyperlink. But for images purposes, we're going to say, this is going to be, say, Starbucks infographic. And this gives you a lot of information. Now, anybody understand what the problem is if I just use Starbucks infographic here? Thank you. It doesn't say coffee. Now, if I'm Starbucks and say I'm a small, let's just say I'm a small coffee roaster. Not Starbucks. Starbucks has a brand and I use my business name without the word coffee. How are coffee addicts supposed to find me? They're not, because I don't have the brand recognition yet, like Starbucks. I don't have the multi-million dollar marketing that Starbucks has. How do I get found? And this works for affiliate websites. It works for blogs. It works on so many different levels that you need to convey what this purpose is. Now, the great thing about the search engines is that they read content in and around images on the page. They look at semantic search. They look at how people are talking. So we're not going to just say Starbucks coffee. We can say 
useful coffee infographic instead of Starbucks because maybe you're not Starbucks. Now in this case, which is an ode to my dogs that I left home in order to be here, what kind of emotion do we have here? And how are we conveying an emotion? Now this can be a wall, this is actually from a wallpaper website. And in order to find it, I looked up brown dog underwater. Now I didn't look up chocolate Labrador, which it is. I looked up brown dog underwater, actually funny dog brown underwater. And I ended up with this image. And this conveys a sense of connection with me. Now imagine if this is being used on your website. So there are a lot of places where you'll see imagery used or content used that's not that connection with people. You need that connection. But you need to convey this connection with the search engines. Another one, which this is an actual advertising on a website. How would you convey this? Would you convey this with coffee? No. Coffee is part of the advertising. It's not the topic. Now we're going to get into topics because that is what we're talking about today is topics. So quality content is not necessarily the amount of words that you have on a page. Yes, Google does love lots of text. It likes content. It likes words. It likes emotion. And it likes them in a certain order. But your content is for a human. Google is just the medium between you and the person. It is not enough to just get the traffic. It is to get the conversion. It is to get them to buy your product or sign up for your newsletter. So Google can do its job. You need to do your job in understanding what will make you an authority leader. So an informational topic of content can be something that you're educating, such as um, how-to videos on technology. An emotion can be something like Labrador Retrievers. I have a dog blog. My dog blog is one of the top ranked dog blogs in the country. Why? Because I chronicled my frustrations along the way in training Labrador Retrievers for the first time. Not that I'm an expert. And what I do as a blogger, I monetize that through affiliate links. That brings both pieces together. But you have to do your due diligence in understanding that emotional connection and then actionable. That piece is always missing in SEO is people are thinking about how much traffic can I bring to a website? Not what frustration can I alleviate? Because once you make that change in your brain between pushing and pulling, the search engines start to pick up. Now, there are so many different avenues of technology with how the search engines work. I'm not going to get into a lot of those, but I'm going to tell you that even you clicking on a link and back at, backing out of that link, Google understands. Google wants to serve you the best quality content it could possi possibly give you. It looks at past searches. It looks at what you posted yesterday. It takes everything into account to try to serve up the best thing possible for you. So you can actually do a search on Las Vegas, different things, venues, food, everything else. And you can be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then you can just do a search on burgers. And there's a chance that Google may try to give you another Las Vegas tip, even though you're in Milwaukee. So it tries to learn because, of course, Google wants to make money, which they do but through pay-per-click. But it tries to give you what you want. So these are the three avenues. And today, we're actually talking about topics. So I'm going to show you how to back up a little bit and look at what your topics are as opposed to what your keywords are. Now, a story that I have here is I had a client years ago that was a mattress company. And they came up and they said, we want to lay, lay latex as our keyword. Anybody in this room have an idea as to lay, what lay, to lay, lay latex is? Uh, we got one person. OK, awesome. Tlele latex is a term used for more for B2B than B2C. And they're a B2C. It is a component of a hyperallergenic mattress. The term is hyperallergenic mattress. People with allergies, things like that. Not Tlele latex. So we looked at the topic. The topic was this mattress line was specifically for people with allergies. So we looked at allergy or allergy-free. 
as a topic, and then we backed it up into the keywords and used more of a long-term approach and long-tail approach. So Google and the other search engines are looking more at topical-based content. So uh, what happens in a lot of websites and a lot of blogs is they don't understand their topic. They try to be in everything for everybody, and they get lost in the shuffle. So looking at the topics here, we're going to use an example from t-shirts. Now when I started in this business, um, I was doing web development. And then in 2004, I started working for Monster.com. And I was a programmer, a geek. And I wanted to do a t-shirt. And one of my colleagues said, oh, why don't you use this place called CafePress.com? Great, no problem. Well, I thought I wanted to do a specific type of t-shirt. And so I started trying to optimize for everything under the sun because I wanted people to get my t-shirts. The problem is that I was getting too granular. I didn't know what my topic was. Once I understood that it was t-shirts, not the word funny or trying to be something I'm not, I then started going backwards into my keywords. So t-shirts is really what your topic is and your main page is really more difficult to index than any other page because it's a generalization page. As I tell people, your main page of your website is kind of like an extension of your business card. It gives people an opportunity to get to know more about you in a general way. But when you're talking about search engines, you're talking about landing pages and content. So each of these would be different landing pages within your content. So you need to understand what your most important areas are and where your customers are for those important areas. So a sci-fi movie t-shirt, see how it works its way back? This is how we understand topical. And when you're using it in that way, because most people will go t-shirts, movies, sci-fi, people don't talk that way. People talk sci-fi movie t-shirt, or a Big Bang Theory t-shirt, or fill in the blank. I mean, we have so many different options with this. So if we break it down just to dogs, again, another ode to my own dogs, Dog t-shirts, there are so many ways that you can go about doing it. Animals can be anything from lions. So if you're trying to optimize for animals, realize that you're not a lion t-shirt place. You're a dog t-shirt place. So these are different, these are just ones that came to the top of my head as opportunities for long tail to understand how people speak, how people talk. Now, taking a step back here, how many people have smartphones? Okay, how many people talk to their smartphones? If you're using Siri, then you're using one search engine algorithm. If you're using Android, you're using a different search engine algorithm. Understanding where your people are coming from and what devices they're using will help you understand what's going on. Because in mobile, where we're going, people are talking to their phones and asking questions. I'm in Las, in Las Vegas. I clicked and talked to Siri yesterday and said, what is the Packers score? I didn't say football. I didn't say Wisconsin, Milwaukee, or anything. I said, what is the Packers score? And it knew, thankfully, that the Packers won. Thankfully, because now I have a happy husband. So when you're thinking about your content, you're thinking about how people are now searching. Now, remember also that when people are searching, if you're local-based, which a lot of people are, if you are local based, it takes into account your cell phone tower or your customer's cell phone tower, you know, what ISP they're using, what they searched on before, where their LinkedIn profile says they are. It takes into account everything. It's a little intrusive and a little nerve wracking at times. But if you start drilling backwards with your content, you say, okay, I'm gonna write this piece or I'm gonna have this video. What am I trying to say here? And what's my topic? Work your way back and you'll start understanding what keywords are. So these are some of the places that you can use your keywords. Now some of them will directly influence the search engines, other ones will not. Some of them you're giving away your golden goose, other ones you're not. As you see here, keyword meta tag, please do not use this. It's been gone since the early 2000s. You can use it, but I tell all of my clients never to use the meta keywords tag, and this is specifically the meta keywords tag. 
Do not use it because what you're doing is you're giving your competitors your keywords. All you need to do is right click, say view page source, and they get your keywords and what you're trying to index for. Don't do it, you're wasting your time. Take those keywords and keep them off site to know what you're writing on for your content. The URL, don't worry if you don't have a keyword in your domain. You do not need to do this. I know of many people who buy so many different URLs. One colleague of mine has 3,000 URLs. And he's trying to off-sell them right now. So if anybody wants URLs, let me know. But he has 3,000 URLs to get the keywords in different ways. What you care about is you care about brand recognition, but the keywords can follow afterwards. And you want the top keywords. You, you want what you're talking about. So if you're blogging, and you know how it, in WordPress it'll end up putting in all the words from your title, you can take out the words that don't matter, like the word in or the or something like that. And you can truncate it and make it nice and concise. But think about how people are searching, like the top 10 tips of Affiliate Summit or 2016 digital marketing um, conferences. People are searching that way. They're not saying digital marketing conferences, 2016, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They don't search like that anymore. So the URL is first. And these are the, the top three are the top three because the meta title is next because it's not only for users, for people who are going to come to your website, but it's also for you and your search engines. So the meta title is the first line that you see in the search engines. It's the clickable link. So you want to make that clickable. You want to engage somebody in that. You just don't want to put keywords in there. Um, you, it also has a character limit. So I do about 60 characters with spaces. Um, and you want it to convey a sense of purpose. The same thing with your meta description. You want that to convey a little bit more sense of purpose. And the H1, with the exception of HTML5, you, you should only really have one H1 per page. Um, the H1 is kind of the headline of a newspaper, how you see it's above the fold. It doesn't necessarily need to be above the fold, but you have H2 through H6 if you really want to use them for styling and editing. But H1 really conveys the, the sense of purpose um, on there. And then you have the other images of the image, the link, title text, categories, depending if you're using blogs or not. So again, this is what Google sees. As I like to say, Google is kind of like a high school student that's starting their first day of school. They get really excited, if you've noticed. Kids always are excited the first day of school. They got their nifty little backpack, and they're entering into the school all happy and ready to get going. But over time, they get bored. The search engines are the same way. They get on your website, they start reading the code in the background. And if your content, if you have a, pay, a website that has 2,000 lines of text or code, and your actual content doesn't show up to line 1700 because you have all this fluff code, there are opportunities for the search engines to find errors and to lose traction on your website. The higher the content, the better for the purposes of just being human because Google reads the back end. So I made this nice and concise for you guys because I wanted to make sure you can ask a lot of questions. If you have any questions on any of this or anything else, you let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, I apologize. I'm usually a little bit more passionate, but they made me stand behind this podium. Um, <laughs> so this is my information. This is my direct contact information. I ask that you please don't put me on a newsletter just because you have my direct email address. Um, but this is me. So I'm going to let you guys now go ahead and ask any questions. I hope you have questions. If you don't have a question, feel free to look at those tip cards and we'll run off of those because there's 25 different tips on those tip cards. So any questions? Yes. Okay, when you, have, when you have text on a page and you have images on the page, what happens is Google looks at the image and then it turns around and if you can't find any data, it, it finds supporting data but it also finds data on the image. So if you have text around that image that has long tail keywords or 
the, you know, normal semantic conversation, it will actually use that to help gauge what that image is and to add credence to it. So if you have an image of a dog, as we did before, and your website is about coffee, it's not going to connect the two and it's not going to help the image come up in image search higher ranking or the content and the image is not going to help the content come out in higher ranking because they're not supporting each other. So Google looks around the content, it looks at your navigation, it looks at the page content, it looks at your links, it looks to look for one specific topic to help engage whether or not you're an authority in that topic. So that's the reason why you would never really want a link from a dog blog to a coffee maker website. It doesn't work, it doesn't connect the two. So you want to use the keywords. My, my biggest tip when you're writing any content is to go ahead and write the content first as though you're talking to somebody. Then go back to the content and look at the words that are fluff, like it or the and add your text and your keywords into that and your topic into those areas to help the search engines know. Because of course, as we're talking to people, we're not always saying dog, 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 dog. And we don't. You want to go ahead and you want to use puppies and canine companion and things like that if you're talking about dogs. Coffee, you can use latte, latte art, cappuccino, all different types of coffee. You don't have to just say coffee, coffee, coffee. But there are certain ways that you can say it um, that will help you out. A client of mine does flavored coffee, gourmet flavored coffee. So that is what we put everything around is a gourmet flavored coffee. And they have a killer candy cane coffee, which I get free coffee, so of course I'm just happy with that. But you need to look at, for them, they kept looking at their brand name and they wanted their brand name in everything. They didn't want what people were searching on. And I said, if you already have that awareness of brand, you don't need me. You don't need me to help. So look at what the keywords are, convey that sense, and you can do that in YouTube. There's fields in YouTube for the content. There's, uh, Dave Taylor had a great presentation yesterday. You can check out his video um, later about keywords and where to put information and all of that content to actually convey what that video is because of course Google can't see a video. Google can't convey that information. So again, and a video is emotional. It gets people to act. So who's next? Any more questions? Yes. So I recently was told that not only should I put my keyword in the alt text tag, I should also put the keyword in the photo file. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, but you also, okay, so the question was, should I put it just in the keyword in the photo name, or should I put, put it in the alt text as well? You should put it in both, but you should, put, you should differentiate it a little bit. So you would have your topic as in both, but the words around it. So if you had, for an example, a person drinking coffee, and you may, for the image of the coffee, or the person drinking coffee, you may use the actual coffee type, say candy cane coffee. But you can go ahead in the alt text and say, happy customer drinking candy cane coffee, or guy drinking coffee, or whatever it may be, to elaborate on it, depending on what your keywords are. So you do want them both, but you want the emotional level. And it works great with products as well. For example, I had a faucet in my kitchen that I did not know the product number to, and it was leaking. So what I did was I knew it was Moen, so I put in Moen white detachable kitchen faucet. And I went into Bing's image search, I saw the one I wanted, I clicked on that. I didn't know the product number, and I was able to find out, okay, they didn't make a replacement for it. So using images, it connected me with what I already knew but I didn't necessarily know a product number or how old it was or anything like that. So think out of the box and play around with it and see how well it works for you. Yeah. But the problem is I reuse images, so I usually make the, the file name descriptive of what's in the picture, mm -hmm. but I may use it five different ways for five different keywords. If you use that one image five different ways for five different keywords, then that's where your alt text is going to come in. Right. And, that, and make sure, of course, there's supporting text around it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, what I actually do is uh, my alt text, I write really for Pinterest. Okay. Because that's what flows over on that. 
You can write alt text for Pinterest, exactly. It, and, and again, that shows right there because Pinterest has its own search engine algorithm. So, and Pinterest is very well indexed by Google. If you look at the page rank and everything else of Pinterest in itself, because it's very visual, you have that attribute. And I know there was a question back there. Yes. How would you vary different file names if you have sim similar images? So say 100 dog images. You would actually, as I said before, brown dog, a Labrador retriever, you can use, because remember, you don't want image names to be huge because the larger they are, the more cumbersome they are. So you want to have only a couple of words within your image name, and it may be brown dog, it may be funny brown dog, or anything like that. So Use your long tail, as you saw the list before, and then start putting those in there. So keep a list on the side. And then start sprinkling them through. I think we have time for one more question because we have time. If there's anybody else? There isn't. OK, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys for a rocking time. Again, I'm on decaf coffee, so I apologize. But if you have any other questions, meet me in the back. Otherwise, I'm at the 1 and 1 tomorrow between 2 and 4. So I'll be there answering any personal questions about you know, your own website. Thanks, guys.